Hey, it's Herc Magnus and welcome to video lesson number seven. Today, what we are going to cover is the general SEO settings on both a global and a per page level, as well as the uh, tiny MCE editor short codes that we have inside your page and post editor that'll help you speed up a couple um, processes that you probably use quite a bit. So where we are right now is inside of one of our example sites, CDE Music, and we're in the Project Supremacy V3 plugin under SEO settings. And you can see there's a few tabs here that will do a bunch of different things. So we'll go over each of those individually as well as these buttons. Um, the only button that I'm gonna talk about because you can hover over the information button and see what each of these do is the force enable PSSEO button. And what that's gonna do is when you have that set to on, okay, it will turn on the control of the title and the descriptions for every single page and post on your site, both future and past. So. Typically, if you want Project Supremacy handling your titles and your descriptions and stuff like that, you're going to want to force enable PSSEO so you don't have to turn it on page by page as you're creating posts. It'll automatically be on for you. The homepage SEO is your default homepage title and description. And there's kind of two scenarios where this is um, going to come into play. There's two options in WordPress by default. Uh, one is to set your homepage as a feed of your most recent blog posts which is controlled in your appearance and customization of your homepage settings. And then the other one is you can set a static page to be your homepage. Now, in the event that you're gonna use a feed of blog posts as your homepage, that's when you're gonna use this for your title and your description on your homepage. However, if you do set a static page as your front page, then it's gonna be overwritten by the actual page's title and description in the PSSEO box, which we'll show you a little bit later on in this video. Um, the next thing is our redirects. So these are basically 301 redirects that you can create. So let's say for instance, if you have an old page or an old URL and you update the URL of that page, then what this will do is automatically create a redirect for you so that the old page will automatically redirect to the new page for you. And for all you SEOs out there, that's pretty important because if you build links to a, a URL, you build up the authority and the trust and stuff like that for that URL, but then you change the URL, you would actually lose all that trust without a 301 uh, redirect, which this is um, what it's gonna create. We can also handle uh, redirects to external properties, meaning you don't have to redirect from one page inside your blog to another. You can actually redirect from a page inside your blog to anywhere else on the internet that you'd like to go. The next three tabs are going, the post types, taxonomies, and MISC are going to be your general settings for your posts, your pages, uh, your taxonomies like categories, tags, and stuff like that. And typically um, for these, what you're gonna wanna do um, is for the taxonomies and MISCs at least, if you wanna clean up your listing in Google, all the extra stuff like the categories, the tags, you can set all these buttons to on and that'll set those to do not index them, but do follow them so that the links are still being followed, but all that extra stuff is not showing up in Google. So for your taxonomies and MISC, go ahead and set those. And then you can also set your titles um, templates and your description templates for your posts and your pages if you wish or you can control them um, using the project planner which we covered that in lesson six or the ps seo box on a per page and individual level as well your short codes that are available to you to use within the titles and the descriptions there's a list of them on this button you can view the short codes and these are all the ones that are available to use by default uh, the next tab is our Facebook open graph settings. Once again, this is a global setting that'll happen by default um, for your homepage. And you can set those here. So you would set your title, your description, and your image, and you will get a preview for Facebook as well as Twitter. And then for on a per page level, you can control those once again. And then the last two are basically, if you wanna hook up to certain um, functions like Bing, Google Analytics, or Pinterest, or Yandex, or whatever, you can set your verification codes in here so that your site is hooked up with those services. And finally, we have a global scripts tab where you can insert scripts, things like tracking pixels from Facebook or YouTube or anything like that. And you can insert those JavaScripts right here in between your script tags, and those will become global, meaning they will show on every page of your website. So next, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go into one of our posts or pages. So I'll go to my posts and go to all posts. And then I'm gonna click on the edit function and show you the PS SEO box. So here you can see Project Supremacy PS SEO box in blue. 
And once again, you're gonna to wanna to set this to on, otherwise all of these features will be off. So make sure you set that to on. Once again, if you always want it to be on, just set the home page or just set the SEO settings that we showed you earlier to uh, globally enable this setting so that it's always on. So this is what's gonna allow you to control your title of your page that shows up in Google as well as your description that shows up in Google. The URL that's generated will match the URL up here. So if you do make a change to this URL, it will change it automatically for you down here as well as create that 301 redirect for you. Next, we have a robot setting where you can play with your meta robot state. Um, for, for a lot of pages that I do, for like even the ones that you're looking at right now, for instance, I don't want them to show up in Google, but I do want Google to see them and follow the links on them. So what you can do is turn on your meta robots and choose if you wanna index the page in search engines or not and then whether you want Google following the links or not. And then we also have advanced meta robot settings and you can see what your meta, your meta entry will be here when you have that set to on. So you just have a couple options for your robot settings. For your open graph profiles on an individual page level, you can set your title, your description, and your image, and you will get a preview of what what your page will look like when shared on Facebook as well as Twitter. So there's, these are the open graph settings. And one of the nice things that we did as well is that when you set an open graph setting and you share your URL on Facebook, sometimes it doesn't show up um, with what you've entered, but that's not because it's not there, it's just because Facebook hasn't updated their cache yet. So we actually created a link right here that you can click that will take you to the Facebook social sharing debugger tool with your URL for this particular page already populated. And then all you have to do is refresh their cache and then things will show up properly. Next, we have our schema button, which will allow you to assign schemas to this particular page or view what schemas are available. But when assigning schemas, you can also do that from within the app. And we covered that in lesson four, building and assigning schemas. So this just gives you another place to do it or view it on a per page level. Notes we added just so that you can add different notes. Um, and it does relate back to the project planner as well. Like for instance, if you're tracking rankings and you add a link, maybe you'll wanna add a note with the date and the thing that you did. So you can keep track of the progress that you're making with your on-page changes and how that's affecting your SEO. One thing to note about notes is that the notes that you collect on your page, if you have your page attached to a project planner, which we covered in lesson six, the notes will show up both on your actual PS SEO box as well as in your project planner as well. And then finally, we have scripts, which is going to allow you to apply a page specific script. So the global scripts will be rendered on every single page of your site. And if you want to supply basically a different script for an individual URL or page or post on your site, you can add that script here. And if you don't want the global script to show, you can just click this button. And for this specific page, the script that you have on your global settings will disappear and only the stuff that you have here will appear. Okay, so now we're gonna cover the Tiny MCE editor short codes. And if you don't know what Tiny MCE is, it's basically this bar right here that allows you to control all the text options and the look and feel of your posts and your pages. And for this demonstration, I'm actually in one of my live affiliate sites called iTunes Alternative on a post that I made for reviewing a product called Dr. Phone. So you can see basically, we have four short codes here that will allow you to do things really quick. And the first one that I'm gonna cover is basically the YouTube search. So if you wanna add YouTube videos into your posts or pages, just go ahead and click an area where you wanna add the video. So you can see I'm gonna add it in between these paragraphs and then click on the YouTube search. Then you can just basically do a keyword search uh, in YouTube. So we'll do Dr. Phone Review, okay? And then go ahead and click search and that will search YouTube for you. So when you want, uh, or when you like a video, you can click on it and it will give you the preview of the video. And then you can of course control the width and height of the video as well as have options for uh, turning on or off the autoplay and stripping out the title data basically that shows on the video. So when you're happy with your settings, just go ahead and click insert video and that's a quick insert of a YouTube video for you. The next one, is gonna be the Pixabay image search. So in order for Pixabay image search to work, you do need to have a Pixabay API key and then insert that into your dashboard um, on the other side, not the plugin side, but your central dashboard under settings and API keys. You'll see a Pixabay API key that you can sign up for, they're free. And once you have your API key in, this will become available to you to use. 
So in order to add an image, once again, very, very easy. We're just gonna click an area within the post that we wanna add the image. So I'll put it right down here. And then we'll do a Pixabay search for Dr. Phone, which might not come up, but we'll see. And if that doesn't work, we can do an iPhone or something like that, just anything that's relevant. So we'll just do another search for iPhone. And you can see we have a whole bunch of iPhone searches. So we're just gonna grab an image, there we go. And then if you wanna add an image title and an alt tag to your image, you can. So what we can do is just say Dr. Phone Review and then Dr. Phone Data Recovery. And then if you wanna add EXIF information, basically what EXIF information is like metadata for your images. Your images do have to be in JPEG format, but Project Supremacy will allow you to enter the metadata into the JPEG image. And that becomes very useful when you're working with like local images and you wanna add like address information to your local images. So you will need a Webmaster Tool API for that. Once again, it's in your API settings. But once you have that set up, you can type if you're working with a local site. So I can type in something like Edmonton, Alberta. Okay, and then I could search that and it will find Edmonton, Alberta on the map and insert my latitude and longitude for me. And then once again, I can put in a description. So we're not gonna actually use that information. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and insert. And of course it's saying no, because I don't have, um, I don't have the API key set up for this one. So we'll just blank that out and insert it. And now you can see it will insert the image for you and it has the title and the tag as well, the alt tag for you. So that is your YouTube and image searches. The next one is gonna be for interlinking um, within your site. So when you wanna link from one page of your site to another page of your site, um, you can do that. And the way that this works is based on the keywords that you have set in your project plans. So once again, we covered project plans in video six. But as you can see for our project manager, we have a bunch of groups that each represent a page or post on our site. And then we have a bunch of keywords that we're targeting for those individual items. So now in order for us to link from one page to another, so let's say at the end of the post, we wanna to link to a different review that we've done. I can go ahead and click on this short code and I can see my tunes go review keywords. So what I can do is just pick a keyword that I wanna use as an anchor text for the link. So Wondershare tunes go review and click on that. And it's because it's a live project and it's already linked up to a page, it will auto populate the URL for you so that you use the anchor text and the link to link from this page to that page. If you do wanna change your URL and the keyword you can to change your URL, just change it here. Um, but we're gonna just click okay. And then if for any reason you wanna change the keyword, the anchor text of the keyword, you would do it right here where you see keyword equals Wondershare tunes go review. So all I'm gonna do is basically populate this um, sorry, change it to capitals. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of text. So you can see here's the short code that will link to the other page. Did you like this review? Also see our, and then Wondershare tunes go review. So what I'll do is I'll update that page and you can see now that this short code when I load the page will be in place. So we're gonna actually look at this. I'm gonna open that link in a new tab. And here we are on the live version of the page. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can say, did you like this review? Also see our Wondershare Tunes Go review. And you can see that this link now links over to another internal page inside of our blog. So the last short code that I'm gonna cover is our affiliate link short codes. And this kind of is dependent on tomorrow's video where we're gonna teach you about how to track affiliate links um, inside Project Supremacy V3 link management, but we'll just visit it quickly today. So I'm gonna to go to link management. And you'll see I've set up a bunch of affiliate links to a bunch of different products. They're already there and I'll show you all the details of this tomorrow. Okay, so here we are back at the Dr. Phone review page. And now if I wanna add any of the affiliate links that I created in the affiliate link manager, all I have to do is use this short code. So, so once again, just choose the area where you wanna add the short code and then click on the affiliate short codes and choose the specific affiliate link that you wanna add. So for instance, I'm gonna do the Dr. Phone iOS system version affiliate link. So I'll click on that and it'll come up with uh, a box that allows you to change the anchor text. So it's already named inside of that. And once again, we'll go over that in tomorrow's video, but you can change the anchor text to anything you want. So we're just gonna go ahead and click okay. And what you can see is it adds a short code to the page. So when I click update on the page and we go visit the live page, 
you'll see that the short codes will actually turn into affiliate links. So let's head over to the page and take a look at that now. So here we are on the page and you can see there's the affiliate link with the anchor text that I selected. Um, and you can see there's banner, there's the, the different options you have are banner links or text links. So those are the tiny MCE short codes and SEO settings that you can use with Project Supremacy. Hope this video was informative. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. And tomorrow will be the final video where I do show you how to use the affiliate link manager and set up all your affiliate links and all the wonderful things that that can do. So we'll see you guys in the next video.